And these are the exclusive Aston Villa dressing room pictures after the match. Kitman Jim Paul underlining Villa's delight. What a night indeed for them all. Des Bremner and his captain Dennis Mortimer holding a Villa banner they collected off the pitch. I asked Mortimer for his reaction to it all. Oh, it's tremendous, Gary. I mean, it's, uh, we've come a long way from the start of the season. From KB boys. I think it was, you know, a lot of people didn't expect us to get this far, especially win it. But now that we've won it, you know, it's a great, it's a great achievement, not only for Aston Villa, but I think, you know, for, for British football again. Um, we, we've kept the trophy in England now for the sixth year on the run. And, uh, you know, we look forward to next season now and hopefully we can sort of get, get it back in England again. I think the thing is, Dennis, I don't think many people in their heart of hearts really thought you could beat Bayern Munich. Really. No, I, I, I think that's been really uh, the pattern, really, of the play, sort of, since we started, you know, playing the hard teams like Dynamo Berlin and Dynamo Kiev and then Anderlecht in the semi-final. I mean, we, we weren't sort of picked as favourites in any of them, but we, we, we won. And we, we beat Bayern tonight and, uh, you know, We've got the trophy and that speaks for everything now. Do you think that it's losing its edge now because uh, an English club keeps winning it every year? Not really. I mean, why should it lose its edge? I mean, it's the, it's the treasured prize to win. I mean, there's only one team from Britain that gets a chance to win it. And uh, we had the chance this year and we won it. And, you know, we've got another chance next season. So it's not, it's not losing any of its sparkle, no way. Talking to Kenny Swain, let's bring him in because you've got a you've got a big party, private party in Amsterdam tonight. Do you think he's going to behave himself? What is do you that, need looking after? Is that right, Gary? Are you invited? No, no, it's a player's <laughs> banquet tonight. It's a private. Well, you'd be most welcome in our house, you know that. What, what were your actual feelings when you the moment you had to come off and sit down? It was so early in the match. Um, disappointment. Um, obvious. Um, just working all year for one thing, you know, playing all the games and, um, you know, I, I just can't take, you know, my young kids at home watching it as well. My two little girls and my little lad and, uh, you know, they've never seen the daddy go off after ten minutes. Uh, I am disappointed in my own way, but, uh, I've, you know, I'm glad for the lads really. I tell you what, the lads will be the first to say you're a good pro, Jimmy, because uh, when you knew you were injured and you had to come off, whatever your own disappointments, it helped him win the cup. There's no way I was going to let the lads down. There's no way I was... I mean, they've worked as much as me. Uh, like last year when we won the championship, we all worked together. I mean, it was just one of those things and I thought, I'm not going to let the lads down, no way. Nigel Spink, that must have been completely unexpected for you, all that. Totally, yeah. Totally, yeah. I didn't... Uh, really couldn't believe it once I got on, but once uh, I made a couple of saves, I knew it was for real then. Well, it certainly was for real, and, and what about those saves? Well, there was something sort of what I normally do in the reserves, but uh, nobody sees him at Villa Park in the reserves every other Saturday, you know. But uh, I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. Can you remember much about them, so, those saves, particularly the really good ones? Uh, well, the two, I think, mainly with the near post, the near post which we got hold of. But, uh, they, were, they were clear through uh, a couple of times, and, uh, you know, I did both told me how we go. Uh, I couldn't believe it in the first half when uh, Rummenigge hit an old red kick. And the way it happened so quick, I thought, you know, God, what am I doing here, you know? Um, but uh, the lad said, you know, don't worry about it. If he, if he does that, you know, you can't, you can't, uh, you can't see him, you know. What, what were you thinking, Nigel, when you suddenly realised you had to come on because Jimmy was in? Well, it happened so quick, it was just a matter of... Um, I didn't even have time to put my tarps on. My tarps were still in my glove bag, and it wasn't until half time that I got my tarps on to keep my socks on. So I just falling down, but, uh, you know. Actually, I could reveal that I was sitting next to you on the substitutes bench, and I, I think... <laughs> What hit me was you said, oh, my mum will be pleased about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, they've just been out for the weekend and uh, they uh, wish me all the best, you know, but I don't think they uh, foresaw this. Well, here's the goal scorer, Peter With, but at this precise moment, Peter, you have a problem which you better explain. Yes, we've been, Ken McNaught and myself have been t called for the dope test and it's, uh, it's a question of giving a sample and uh, we just can't find the, uh, the strength to give a sample because we've sweated so much. <laughs> so at the moment we're getting gallons and gallons of water water down us. <laughs> there's no there's no sort of chance you could fail the dope test if you ever make it. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> I think I've sweated most of it out of me anyway. So you've got to go back in there and try and give a sample. Well, the last time they were just saying that last time they wait, they had to wait six and a half hours. So hopefully we're not going to have to wait that long. I'll have to drink a few more gallons of water. I think. What about the goal itself, uh, Peter? Did you wonder for a split second whether it wasn't going to go in when it hit the post? Well, uh, Gary done, Gary, Gary done great really. He, put, he sort of turned the defender and he played it through to Tony, and Tony sort of uh, 
I don't know if he went through past one or two, but he ended up getting to the byline. And uh, I just remembered him crossing it. I thought to myself, as soon as he got by the boy, that he was going to hit it. And he hit it in low. Uh, it just so happened that it was a bit of a... Uh, the goal mouth has got, hasn't got much grass, and it bobbled, and it just bounced up at me. And in the end, it, it come off me sort of... Uh, bit of a shin and, and foot and it sort of hit the post and bounced in off the post but I mean it doesn't really matter no it counts it, I mean, it counts that's right but did you think for a split second it might go out no because it was so it happened so quickly actually that it was just a split second and it uh, at first when it probably hit me that I didn't think it was uh, you know it wasn't one of the volleys and rockets but I mean you know it just went in comment from you Tony Morley on the go I don't need anything Peter said it all he was getting at me no I was uh, I remember Gary playing the ball through and I remember the big centre half come out, so I went to take it inside my left, and I got it wrong footed. And every time I get wrong footed, I always lead, just go for the line then. And it always seems to work, and I went for the line, and I seen the space, and I hit it hard and low, poking between a far post and the defender line. And Hughes is always in, or Gary around the, that area. It only leaves one question for Tony Morley. You've got a private players' party with wives and girlfriends in Amsterdam tonight. Do you think Peter With will have got through dope control in time to be there? Well, I, I, think, if he, I, I think he should leave. Yeah, knowing with you, find his own way there. I know, from it. You know, so if he, if he but will he make the it, sample? That's what everybody's wanting. Uh, I doubt it. I doubt it. Like, you know. <laughs> I, I hope he goes up anyhow. I'm fed up away for Get it sorted out. And the familiar sight in the winning dressing room the trophy and bottles of champagne. And so from the dressing room to the flight home. And at Schiphol Airport in Amsterdam, even the captain of the chartered Dutch airplane was a Villa supporter by the end. And indeed, a visitor in the captain's cockpit, probably enough, the Villa captain, Dennis Mortimer. Ken McNaught, fast asleep. Andy Blair, the joker. Gary Shaw, still with a sweet taste of success. And as they came in to land, I asked Tony Barton about Villa's future. Well, I think that you get these extra matches through being successful. Uh, we've been successful. We got the, uh, the, uh, the World Club Championship in Tokyo in December. Uh, and then we've got the Super Cup two-legged affair against Barcelona. So it's all uh, from the player's point of view and from the club's point of view, it's prestige. Um, and also financial. So it's, it's, it's the re rewards you get for being successful. Sixth time in six years, yeah. European trophy back on English soil. Teddy, come on! Come
We have here a very fine cup for a very fine football team. I think you will agree they've done us proud. And I have the honour of going over to Holland to watch it all. On your behalf, I want to thank them very much indeed for bringing such honour to this city and to this country.